increase in numbers. Can we ask your, to you to give your opinion and expertise to this area, the causality of this epidemic? Um, yeah, of course. Well, as we know, there's been a dramatic change in the uh, amount of diagnosis of autism, and this was uh, scoffed at for a number of years. And then uh, I think that part of, of, of looking at why we went from a syndrome that was diagnosed in one in 15,000 to one in 20,000 children to what's now seen in, depending upon the, the area that you're in, up, up to 150 children, that something had to have happened that was outside of just a straight genetic. You can't have an epidemic um, right. with this short a period of, I mean, you can't have an epidemic. It takes years for this to develop if it's strictly genetic, correct? Absolutely. And, you know, there were arguments that were made for a long period of time that, that doctors just couldn't diagnose this. But this is anyone who's ever had any contact with a child who's affected with autism, this is not a subtle syndrome. You know, to imply that uh, the, the smart and older pediatricians for the last 50 years have somehow missed it up until the 80s, 90s, and these aught years is preposterous. So we, we have a, we have a, but one of the best ways I think to think about it is that when you consider just, when you consider the, the phenotype, it's sort of the, the representation of the, of, of the person genetically um, as of an autistic individual that they're individuals who are incredibly sensitive. In fact, their, their phenotype, I think, would have to be called sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And in that way, they're, they're sensitive to everything. You know, our, our kids are sensitive to noise, they're sensitive to light, they're sensitive to chemicals, um, they're sensitive to medicines. And I think that this is an underlying... Um, that, that in society, in, in the societies that have passed before us, that, that our kids always existed, that there was always a, a, a sensitive child, maybe what would have been the child that's one in a hundred, one in a thousand, um, who would have in a different, uh, in a, in a different tribe might've been the medicine man, um, might've been the, 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 the tribal crone who knew which herbs to use, who knew when to plant the crops. And what's happened is that there's been some kind of environmental derailment that's taken this trait that makes our kids so special and has put them at a, a tremendous disadvantage that's augmented this sensitivity, almost like a, a shell shock that after this environmental insult that derails their development because of some exposure during developmentally critical time window, uh, leaves them in a place where their sensitivity is, is blown out, where they're their sensitivity to what would have normally been an inheritable characteristic that made them special and desired um, left, leaves them in a place where they're restricted and, and somewhat lost. And what that environmental derailment is, um, I think, differs from decade to decade. You know, I think that the original big bump in autism is, of course, in my opinion, um, was in part due to uh, vaccines, but not probably vaccines alone. You know, the change in the vaccine schedule that I experienced when when I was growing up in the 70s is very different than what children experienced in the amount and type of vaccines that they got in the 80s and 90s. And what goes along with that are prescribing patterns that are common at that time. So there was a big change in the 80s after the discovery of the dangers of giving aspirin to children with a fever, the movement away from aspirin to use Tylenol and acetaminophen or paracetamol. And those, that drug in combination with what might be an immunological overactivation due to a number of increased vaccines, uh, combined with the detoxifying uh, arrest that takes place when one takes acetaminophen as a pain reliever, uh, the exposure to an inherent increase in the number of pesticides and toxins, plastics, you know, all through the 70s and 80s, um, Moms in the know were drinking bottled plastic water because that was the thing to do. So all of these different toxins, the exposure, the immunological overactivation due to the combination of the vaccine schedules may have led to a synergistic effect of those toxins and a crippling of the immune system, pro-inflammation, and sort of a perfect storm, which has led to this epidemic.